Hello there, my name is Jack Edwards and welcome to my YouTube channel. For those of you who don't know, I'm currently in my second year at Durham University studying for a degree in English Literature. For the entirety of my degree so far, I have been documenting my experience with it on this channel and giving kind of tips and advice and sharing my university life and because of that, I get asked a lot of questions about what uni is like and I was actually the first person in my close immediate family to go to university and so a lot of the questions I get asked are things that I would have asked to two years ago. And so I thought with this video I would do a kind of university FAQ and answer all of those frequently asked questions that I am asked on a daily basis. So I took to my Instagram story to ask you guys what you wanted to know and boy did you want to know a lot. So without further ado I think it's about time we started answering some questions about university. Question number one is how do you get over homesickness? Now this is a tricky question because I think everyone has such a different experience with homesickness and moving away from their family homes. I actually thought that I would be really really homesick and just wasn't and I really think that was because I was so busy for the first term. I was so busy that I didn't go home at all in my first term at uni. In fact I didn't go home during term at all. That's just because I was so busy so I signed up to a lot of stuff early on and just kept myself active and out of the house and doing stuff and getting so stuck in that I almost didn't have time to feel homesick. However some things that I would say that helped was just having a constant kind of dialogue with my parents and my family like we had a group chat going via text and so they would just message it all the time and kind of I'd, I'd know what they were doing and what they were up to without having to constantly ask or phone. I also had a lot of home comforts in my room and um, like pictures of my family and friends all around um, and I think that really helped as well. Most of the time though I'm just asking my parents for pictures of the dog like 90% of my messages to my mum are like please send more pictures of the dog. The next question is one I get asked all the time and that is how do you find the perfect housemates? Now finding the perfect housemates is so so crucial because those people are going to be in your personal space, they're going to be in your house all of the time and they're probably going to be your best support system at university. And that is where this super cool app called Baddy comes in. The people at Baddy actually reached out to me to collaborate on this video and when I looked into their app, I was just like, this is amazing. Why did I not know this existed earlier? The premise of Baddy is of course to find the perfect housemates and they do this using AI. You fill in a personal profile based on your hobbies, your interests and your personality type and they match you with the perfect people to live with. Basically taking the biggest stress completely off of your hands, which is so amazing and I wish I had had this last year. So if you're looking for people who are interested in sports or filmmaking or food or anything like that, you can find them on this app and there are actually 1 million users worldwide. And most excitingly of all, 100,000 of those people are in London. So if you're looking for a London university, then Baddy should be your go-to. And a very cool statistic is actually that the algorithm on Baddy is 30 times more accurate than Tinder, which, I mean, that is a cool fact. And you can actually chat with people on the app so you don't have to give away your mobile number straight away so you can kind of build up that level of trust with you know essentially strangers who eventually could be your new best friend. You meet so many friends for life at university and my two best friends are actually people that I live with and like that is the coolest thing. Um, I will leave the link down below if you want to download it. Thank you so much to Baddy for collaborating with me on this video but yeah I definitely say look for people who are similar to you, people who want the same things out of a house, um, people who you know go to bed at, the, at a similar time to you or um, wake up at a similar time. Usually people with common interests will probably be the easiest to get along with so I'd really really recommend that to avoid arguments and avoid frustration down the line. The next question is what is the main difference between a Russell Group University and other universities and I'm so glad that someone asked this question because I didn't actually know. So I did some research and it turns out that the Russell Group is a self-selecting body of 24 universities in the UK. It initially started off as just 18 who met up in a hotel called Russell Hotel in 1994 to discuss how they were going to lobby parliament and government in order to pursue their own interests. So I think the most important thing to note is that these are not necessarily the best universities in the country, they just happen to be a self-selected group of universities, originally just 18, now 24, who met up in order to look after their own interests. For example, St Andrews is not a Russell Group University despite being one of the top universities in the UK. Durham, Exeter and York, which are all really great universities, only joined in 2012. And for many courses, the top university for that course will not be one of these 24 universities. You know, although the Russell Group is obviously important in the UK, they are not the be all and end all. The next question is, how easy was it for you to settle into a new place? Um, I actually settled really, really quickly and much quicker than I ever thought that I would. I think it was just because I clicked really well 
well and easily with my housemates straight off the bat. Um, I invited them all into my room and we got chatting and I just felt immediately comfortable with them. Getting to know the city that I was living in as well was really important, so I made a point of kind of going and exploring Durham and appreciating it as a city that I really admired. And like I said before, just get so stuck in, join societies and clubs that interest you um, and try and meet loads of new people and broaden your horizons. How does student finance even work? I'm so confused. And then lots of crying faces. Well, hopefully just like Ariana Grande, there will be no tears left to cry when I explain this. Basically, your tuition fee loan is something you will never ever see. You apply for it and that goes straight to the university. Like you never see that money, but you will have to pay it off eventually. The maintenance loan, however, is something that you do see and you get paid that in three bursts over the course of the year. Now this loan is entirely dependent on household income. So um, people whose family earn more money get less uh, maintenance loan, people whose families earn less money get more maintenance loan. And so the idea is kind of that your family make up the rest. So the maintenance loan kind of goes on your rent, your books, all the equipment that you need for university, um, buying food, etc. And then once you leave university, you have this kind of debt, which is kind of like an extended tax. And so the more money that you earn, the more of your student loan you pay off. And so the likelihood is that most of us won't pay off the entire student debt that we have. And it is um, completely wiped out after a certain number of years. Is it easier or harder than A-levels? Mmm, this is a tricky one. I definitely think that the second year of A-levels is one of the most stressful years of your life. Like, you, there's so much on the line and you have to get specific grades to get into a specific university. I would say in that sense, usually at university your first year doesn't count, um, which is such a welcome break after you've been doing exams for years um, where everything counts and everything is building up to, to this moment. It's nice to know that that first year is usually formative, which means it doesn't count towards your overall degree. Obviously there's still a lot of studying, but I think you can definitely get involved in a lot more new things like clubs and societies and stuff. So in that sense, it's less stressful. On the other hand, there are a lot of new things to consider, like for a lot of people you have to cook for yourself for the first time, look after yourself for the first time, keep yourself alive for the first time, and that is a little bit harder than A-levels. So it definitely does vary, but I would say first year at university is a little bit less stressful than A-levels. And if you're currently doing your A-levels, then I'm sure that is an exciting prospect. How does the grade system work? For example, honours, first class honours, etc. So the way that the grading system works is you get like a percentage on an essay, for example. So 40% would be um, a third, 50% would be a 2-2, 60% would be a 2-1, and 70% plus is a first, and the first is the best you can get. What honours means is that you get graded, so um, an ordinary degree without honours would just be pass or fail. Whereas an honours degree means that on your certificate it will say whether you got a third, a 2-2, a 2-1, or a first. For me, for example, my first year was formative so it didn't count towards my overall degree, but you had to pass. Second year is, counts for 40% of your overall degree, and third year counts for 60% of your overall degree. And we shall see how that goes. The next question is in all caps and it says, essay writing, is it the same as A-levels? Firstly, you don't need to shout. Secondly, um, it isn't really the same as A-levels because there is a lot more referencing. It's kind of like a bit more like coursework, but the questions you're given are very broad and they, I mean, usually for me, they're just a statement with discuss at the end and then you kind of um, have a lot of creative control over what you write about and how you write about it. There is a lot more research, but also a lot more independent thinking and finding a nuance to your argument. How do you take notes in lectures? Now, there are definitely lots of different ways of doing this. I personally handwrite my notes, so to every lecture I take a coloured pen, a normal black pen, and then a highlighter in the same colour as the coloured pen. So I try to separate out my notes a little bit so they're easier to read. Um, so I do headings, which I highlight, just to kind of compartmentalize them, and then I put any references or quotes or further reading in the coloured ink so they're easy to spot as well. And then everything else is just scrawled in black pen. <laughs> Having said that, a lot of people do type their notes and a lot of people also record the lectures on their phones if um, the lecture isn't already recorded for you. For my department at Durham it isn't. So a lot of us record our lectures on our phones and particularly if you're having like a bad day where your brain isn't quite on the ball or um, if the lecturer is speaking really fast or if it's a lecture you're just particularly interested in, I would really recommend recording it. Even if you never listen to it again, at least you have the option to. How many hours a week do you get on every topic of a module? Now this definitely depends on what kind of degree you do. Scientists, for example, have so many contact hours and they're always in labs and stuff like that. Whereas people who do humanities subjects like English or history, like I do, um, I do an English degree, I get about nine contact hours a week, which is six lectures and then probably three tutorials. Well, that was in my first year, but this year I've got less tutorials, so I'd say probably I get like 
seven or eight contact hours a week. So that's a lecture for every module each week and then a tutorial probably every two or three weeks in each module. But that doesn't mean it's less work, it just means there's more independent work. So it's a lot of personal research and study outside of class, which you have to motivate yourself to do. What are university exams like? Now university exams are very different to A-level exams because there is so much more choice. In my experience anyway, we probably get about 20 questions and you have to answer three or four of them in the exam. And that just means you really get to tailor your subject into what you're interested in and what you've researched. So they want really in-depth research. So they want depth rather than breadth, if that makes sense. What are the assignments and exams like at university? So I get six essays a term, I would say. Will it be easy to do a part-time job and uni? Now, I've been doing a part-time job whilst at uni in the sense of my YouTube channel. And I'd say it is difficult at times to have another thing on your plate, but there are a lot of people who do it and it does really help to have some of your own money to spend because university is expensive. I have a lot of friends who work in supermarkets or do like bar shifts or you can do like club promotion that um, means your hours are a little bit more flexible. But yeah, I have managed to maintain it and make time for it. And I also do think that if you do a subject like mine where the contact hours aren't huge, it does give you a bit of routine in your lifestyle. So I would definitely say that it is actually quite beneficial to have a part-time job, not just in a financial sense. However, I would say in exam season, take it down a notch, take it really slow, do not burn yourself out. Do not prioritize a part-time job over your degree. What's more important, work or social? I really think it's just a mix of the two. I mean, obviously getting the work done is important, but if you don't have a social life at uni, I mean, I just don't think you're doing it right. And I mean that in the sense that there are so many opportunities to get involved with new things, to meet the most amazing, diverse group of people you will ever come across and encounter and you can really put so much time into it. So I would definitely say that you won't benefit from the university experience as much if you put your work way, way, way above your social life. I think that they should be equals, at least for the first two terms. A lot of these rules I'm talking about just do not apply during exam season because that's where work just ramps up and takes priority. What things should I consider when I choose my firm slash insurance? Pick a university and a course that you love. That's just your firm, so be ambitious with your firm. With your insurance, I would say definitely be realistic. Think about, you, you know, you wanna go to university and you wanna go to a university that you really like, so put your insurance as one that has a realistic offer that you reckon you could probably get. Think of your insurance as like a safety net, something you can fall back on. So it's not necessarily the second best uni, it's the, it's the uni that you could definitely get into with with the grades that you're expecting. How do you make friends at uni? Now this is something that I never felt comfortable talking about, but I get asked it so much that I thought I might as well address it. I always say that university is one of the only blank slates you ever get in life where you get to just like wipe the slate clean and start afresh and be whoever you wanna be. Say hello to everyone, especially during freshers week and stuff. And just don't be afraid to start a conversation and get involved in as much as possible. Again, join clubs and societies. I sound like a broken record, but I cannot stress it enough. And just put yourself out there. When you sit down in lectures or at a new club or society, just start chatting to the person next to you or around you, kind of get a conversation going. What is the worst that could happen? You literally have nothing to lose. How to small talk without it being awkward. Talk about the situation that you're in, talk about the subjects that you take, talk about the club or society that you're at, you know, find your common interests and chat about it. Otherwise, just think of super easy things that everyone does, like what's your favorite TV show, what's your favorite film, I don't know, what do you have for breakfast? What, you, what, what dinners have you been making? How are you finding cooking for yourself? How are you finding the workload? Do you know? Find something that everyone in that situation that you are currently in can relate to and go from there. Are ensuite rooms worth it? Now, I would actually say no. Obviously, if you have some kind of medical condition, which means you probably need your own bathroom, then probably yes, it is worth it. But um, in my case, and in so many other people's cases, it just isn't necessary, really. Sharing a bathroom is not a problem at all. Like, you hardly ever have to wait or queue for it. Like, it's very rare that someone else will be in the bathroom when you need to go. And generally, if it's a shared space, everyone respects it um, and respects each other's privacy and that kind of thing. So. Ensuite bathrooms to me are not worth the money because as soon as you move into an actual student house outside of Hall's residence, you're not gonna have an ensuite anyway. You probably don't have one at home. So why get used to something that just isn't a norm? So I would say you're better off spending that money on experiences and having a great time than having a bathroom to yourself. Do you feel pressured into drinking, having sex, etc., at uni? Um, I would definitely say there is like a kind of drinking culture and that kind of thing. Do I feel pressured? No, I don't think so. I think it's always been something that I've wanted to do and I, I really think that we're all mature enough and old enough now to not force anyone to do anything that they don't want to do. You know, we're like 20 years old. Obviously, I can only ever speak from my own personal experience, but 
I don't think I've ever felt pressure to do anything that I don't want to do, although there is sometimes a culture around it where it is glorified and celebrated. How many societies can you sign up for? The limit does not exist. Having said that, what I would say is test them all out at the beginning. Quite often they'll let you uh, try out all the societies for free um, and then whittle it down to the ones that you actually want to dedicate your time to. What is the easiest slash best meal to make at uni? Pasta bake is the most easy thing to do in the whole world. You can bulk make things like bolognese or chili, which you can then just divide up into little Tupperware, freeze it and um, whip it out of the freezer whenever you want an easy meal. Yeah, I'd say just experiment with different things. Like I generally try to cook one or two new meals a week just so that I'm constantly like learning new things. But definitely start with the basics and then the harder stuff will follow. How do you stay on track with all of the deadlines you get? with great difficulty. The main thing I would say is that a lot of the deadlines you get are right at the end of term. So for example, you'll get like six essays due right at the end of term. Divide that up over the weeks that you have because you'll probably have like eight weeks before then. You know, set yourself your own deadlines. So be like, right, by the 31st of October, I want to have that essay done. By the 7th of November, I want that essay done. Do you get one-on-one -on -one time with teachers? I guess kind of academic stuff, um, sort of similar to teachers. Yeah, I guess. Um, all tutors and um, academics have like office hours. So you can go and turn up and um, just knock on their office door and go and have a chat with them. Probably be like two hours a week that their office will kind of be open for you to go and drop in. But also email them, you know, like they will happily answer your questions, like lecturers, tutors, anyone will answer a question that you have. Um, they might not get back to you on the same day or the same week, but they will get back to you. Um, that's what they're there for. So utilize that resource. How long does it take to settle in and find a solid friendship group? Now I found my kind of solid friendship group in the first term of first year, but for some people that is just so not the case. Um, some people I know found their kind of core group when they were in their third year, like the people that they really clicked with, some people in their second year. Um, it takes a while for some people to find that group that they love and my group has definitely changed over time and the people I'm closest to have has changed over, over the year. But you know, I think don't feel pressure to have like a solid university family like straight away. Um, it will come. So hang on in there. Sounds weird but how often do you shop for food? That's not weird. Um, I'd say probably like once every two weeks I do a big shop. I get the bus to Aldi and do a big old shop in there. But um, I kind of do shop for like little things over the course of the week. So just like if I need lettuce or some fresh salad or fresh veg, I'll go to the shop on my way home and get that. How do you apply to open days? Online, all of the information will be there for each university. They'll say when their open days are and how to book onto them. For some really popular accommodation at certain universities, you have to book um, to go and have a proper look around like specifically onto that. And for some, you can stay over and um, like stay the night and they, you can get um, like uh, catering as well. But yeah, all of the information will be on each university's website. So I think that is everything. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much to Baddie for collaborating with me and sponsoring this video. The link to Baddie to download it will be down below, so check that out for finding the perfect housemates, especially in London. These are the most frequently asked questions that I'm asked on a daily basis, so I hope that they have kind of uh, answered a few things that you might have been wondering. Let me know if you have any other questions. I always reply to all comments down below, so comment them down below and I will answer them. Thank you very, very much for watching this video. I've been Jack Edwards. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram in case you want to see any other Q&As that I do. Subscribe to this channel and give this video a thumbs up if it helps, um, and hopefully I will see you next time. Bye-bye.